Hi, I'm Keith Wilson, curator of ancient Chinese art here at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. I'm delighted to share with you our current exhibition at the museum, Anyang, China's Ancient City of Kings. The show is all about the discovery of an ancient Chinese city and an ancient Chinese culture. I'm here with my collaborator, Kyle Stenke, who will tell you a little bit about the discovery of the Anyang site back in 1928. This exhibition brings you back to the birth of archaeology in China. Excavations at Anyang began in 1928, and they lasted for a decade. Discoveries were made of ancient palace foundations, the royal tombs of the Shang kings, and also buried chariots and divination records. The exhibition opens with an immersive room-sized presentation of the archival materials that Kyle mentioned, we worked on this, first of all, with Academia Sinica and with the outside digital production company, Unit 9. This was a very successful collaboration between the museum and these other outside organizations. In addition to being about the discovery of the Anyang site itself, the show is also about discovering the material culture of the people that lived in this site 3,000 years ago. That's illustrated using amazing objects in the museum's collection, bronzes, jades, ceramics, and other kinds of carvings. The first gallery of the exhibition is all about the foundation of the city, which happened sometime in the 13th century BCE, so about 3,300 years ago. It tells that early story through objects that we can associate with Shang kingship, we have a fairly clear idea about royal objects through the discovery in 1976 of one intact royal burial at the site. This was the tomb of Fu Hao, the consort of Wu Ding, one of the early Shang kings. Her tomb contained objects just like these that are in the museum collection. They're not practical weapons and tools, but would have been used as symbolic objects representing royal authority and power. They combine three magical materials, bronze, turquoise inlay, and jade blades, to a dazzling effect. The object here on the left gives us a clearer understanding of the original appearance of these objects. The other blades would have been mounted to a handle just like this piece, transverse handle, so not unlike a tomahawk. The missing handles on the other blades uh, probably were made out of wood but they probably had transverse handles just like this object on the left where the handle itself is made out of bronze. It, like the other pieces, combine a cast bronze fitting with turquoise inlay. The contents of Shang tombs tell us a lot about the structure of the society at Anyang. As you see in the image behind me, the excavation of Fu Hao's tomb revealed much about her status. Likewise, this object tells us about its owner. This ritual vessel, which was intended for offerings to ancestors, also carries an inscription. And the inscription identifies its owner as a lineage head. The incredibly fine casting, and also the amount of metal used to cast it, reflects the high status of lineage heads. From the very beginning when we were planning the show, we knew we wanted to include a gallery dedicated to horses and chariots, because they first appear in China during this period. In Anyang culture, Chariots have a very important use above ground as luxury transportation, probably restricted to the royalty. What's interesting is they're also important ritual objects that are found in sacrificial burials. Major tombs are usually accompanied by separate pits that include chariots, suggesting that they were important vehicles for the afterlife as well. This feature, which we developed in collaboration with the production studio Unit 9, invites you to take a look at an Anyang neighborhood. In addition to exploring parts of the infrastructure of the city like canals, you can also explore the road system, the housing, and also even the food and drink that were part of daily life at Anyang. This case takes you into one of the design studios at an Anyang foundry, where we're able to examine the thought process of designers when they're creating vessels and the surface decoration that adorns them. This water basin features a spectacular dragon with a diamond-backed body wrapping around itself, surrounded by a group of real animals, fish, birds, and tigers. On this spouted object, 
you get a similar motif appearing on the surface. But in this case, the diamond pattern body wraps around the exterior of the piece with two clawed hands reaching for either side of the spout. This hands-on interactive takes you inside an Anyang foundry to look at how bronzes were cast. We developed this with the digitization program office of the Smithsonian Institute. To create a bronze vessel, a model of the vessel was first made in clay, and on the clay model, a mold assembly was formed. In the final mold assembly, there would be a core in the middle that would create the cavity of the vessel, and then around that, the ceramic assembly would be completed, and then finally bronze would be poured in to complete the process. I think visitors will understand the inspiration behind this vessel, whereas many of the other objects included in the show represent more abstract forms, circles, squares, and other geometric forms. This piece was clearly inspired by a natural animal that the designer clearly had seen. It's very well represented with its little baby perched on its back as the knob for the lid. In fact, the raised trunk of the elephant serves as the spout for this liquid container. In the final gallery of the show, we take a look beyond Anyang to the other bronze using cultures from the same time period. And here we have a case that exemplifies this, objects from Anyang and from Southern China. The two small bells at the front of the case are like those that are often found in elite burials in Anyang, so they represent this elite northern culture. The two larger bells don't come from Anyang. They come from kingdoms in southern China, in the Yangtze River region. Bells like this are found in South China, sometimes singly on mountaintops. Their exact function is unknown, but the artifact type must have been incredibly important to those cultures. I hope you've enjoyed this preview of the exhibition, and we invite you to come enjoy it in person. The digital experiences are immersive and rich in person, but if you can't come or if you want to supplement that on-site visit, check out the exhibition website online. There are lots of resources there for you to enjoy.